I'm making this video in the interest of helping some of you to understand and identify a badly written character. Even though this video is specifically targeting the characters from anime, it can also apply to any other character from any type of story. It should go without saying, these are not facts, they are simply my red flags to detect when a character is badly written. So, for starters, let's take a look at the first thing which indicates a badly written character. Characters that don't change. The arc of a character means they should end up in a completely different place than where they started. A character that starts out innocent and at the end is a criminal mastermind has an arc. Characters that have no significant development or change are usually bad. Their actions or feelings don't make sense. Natsuki Subaru from ReZero is the perfect example. He just meets this girl named Emilia and he is immediately willing to risk his life for her which he does multiple times. On top of that, he falls madly in love with her, something that even puts love at first sight to shame. It doesn't make sense. Something like this can be pulled off, but the writing in this case just didn't work and it was out of place. No goals. If a character's goal is to comfort the protagonist or be a tool, it's absolute rubbish. A character should have a goal, an obstacle, and then do things to overcome that obstacle. Every single character needs to have some kind of a goal, but the goal doesn't need to be an exciting one. A secondary character goal could be to earn enough money to buy a new coat because it's getting cold at night. You can look at any supporting character from Durarara. They all have a goal, no matter how small it is. Simple goals open the door for lots of interesting things to happen. The goal is too vague. This ties with the previous point. And if the goal is too vague, I feel it's a place where characters fall apart. One interesting example is Masamune from Masamune Kuno Revenge. His goal is to take revenge on Adagaki Aki and make her suffer. Because she rejected him when he was a fat kid. So, what's his plan? He gets in shape, takes care of his looks, then works to getting Aki's attention, he saves her, brings her food, compliments her, invites her out, but always remembers his goal. And because there are plenty of obstacles he needs to overcome, conflict happens, which leads to other things, and so on and so on. It's a big goal that requires a lot of other tiny goals to eventually tie together and achieve the big goal. It's as if someone would say, I want to have a great Christmas, that's their goal. But how about this? I want to have the perfect Christmas with perfect food, gifts, decorations and everyone cooperating with me in order to fulfill my goal. How does this sound? It's more specific, which means more complex, which is the lifeblood of a story. Motivations. Characters need goals. But to my mind, they need a reason for wanting that goal. Naruto didn't want to become Hokage because it was cool. He wanted to be accepted and respected by the other people around him. Hamlet wants to avenge his father because he was murdered and betrayed. Which is also exceptionally portrayed by Fua Mahiro from Zetsuya no Tempest in his quest to kill the person responsible for his stepsister's death. A character needs to be motivated to do the thing they want by something, not because someone told them that's what they should do. Their flows aren't real. In my opinion, characters should all have flows, real flows, that have an impact on the plot, themselves, their relationships, etc. For me, a flow is something that a character could feasibly work on to change, but doesn't or is very difficult to change. One of my favorite flow for a character is portrayed by Sengoku Nadeko from the Monogatari franchise. Her defining character flow is pride, and I think that pride is the most difficult character flow to write as an author. Now, Nadeko's pride is not about self-respect or confidence in herself. It's about her disdainful behavior as she considers herself ahead of anyone else. She shows the world that she's perfect and cannot do wrong which causes a series of problems for her and the people around her. In the same vein, a true flow is not endearing. Being clumsy isn't a flow if it's cute. It's a quirk. 
if clumsiness makes the character commit a relevant mistake, then it's more of a flow. They are too passive. Is the character acting or reacting? Is the character dragged along by the plot or is having an active role in it? Are they doing things or having what they do pushed upon them? Look at Toma from Index. He simply lives his life as usual until he's dragged by others into conflict, often unwillingly. And then you have Inaho Kaizuka from Aldonach Zero, who is simply carried by the plot. The character should make choices and actively do things, instead of the situation changing around them. What is the character doing to actually make change? Side characters that don't do anything. When a character only exists to make the protagonist look good, fall in love with them, or assist the protagonist in everything without having their own reasons or goals, it bothers me. And there are countless examples of, of the top of my head, Sakura Haruno, Misa Amane, Yuki Cross, Yuki Tero Amano. Their stakes are too low. I left it for the very end because it's a bit of a plot thing, however the stakes need to be high for the characters too. If the main character has nothing personal at risk and can stop at any time with no personal repercussions, then the stakes are low, even if they are high from a plot standpoint. Let me give you an example. Let's take Mikasa from Attack on Titan. If 10 nameless people were to die but Mikasa could save them, from a plot perspective the stakes are high. But what if she doesn't? Do you as a viewer really care if a bunch of faceless people die? Does she really care? Not really. If you put Eren in their place, then the stakes are high and personal for both Mikasa and us. That's not the best example, but hopefully the point stands. The stakes don't have to always be life or death, but it should be significant to the character. That is pretty much what goes through my mind when I'm introduced to a new character. It doesn't matter if it's a main character of an anime or one of the supporting cast members. Now obviously some of them apply more to a main than a supporting character, and also doesn't mean that if a character misses one of those, it's instantly considered bad. But now I'm just rambling and I'm sure you get the point. Thank you guys for watching, subscribe if you want to see more of what I do, and I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.